Hey, what's up guys? It is Halloween time and I have a treat to share with you. This is Materialize. This is the free way to generate textures and materials for your 3D models. Let's check it out. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is come to this website, which I will link in the description below. And you can take a look at what it can do, some general information, all the different textures it can create, and who's using it. And not only is it free, but it is also open source. And then down below that, we just have the download button. And it is only available for Windows 64-bit right now. I believe the uh, Linux and Mac versions are coming up soon. Hey, when you download, all you get is a zip file with uh, these files, and you just export it and run materialize.exe. There's no installer, it just runs directly from this file. Okay, when you first open it up, we'll get this blank scene, a blank object that kind of looks like a picture frame. And you can use the right mouse button to rotate it around, or the mouse wheel to zoom in and out and the middle mouse button to move it around if you really want to uh, so let's come up here we have all these blank little windows here these are where your textures will go so the first one we're going to look at is the diffuse map which is your color texture and we'll click the O to open and we'll open our image which I already have conveniently right here and you can see it's this kind of stone wall or brick wall and select and there we go it goes in the picture frame and so now we can come up here to our height map we'll do that first and we'll click create and we can see we get half of it covered in the height map and half of it is the original and we can adjust that with the slider here for comparison's sake. And so because of this way this particular texture is, we want to get that grout to be a darker color and the stones to be lighter. So we can adjust these uh, frequency weight equalizer, uh, just tweak them around, or we have some presets. So we have default, details, or displace. I've already tested this texture out and I found that oops, I found that doing kind of a downward slope from the right to the left works pretty well. Yeah, something like that. And then down here we have the frequency contrast equalizer. Again, we have some presets, default, cracks, and funky. <laughs> let's uh, go with cracks first, and let's just adjust some of these. Let's see what we can get. So going this way would be kind of the opposite. I want the grout to be darker. So let's, let's play around with them until we get what we want. Okay, so, so sliding everything down to the bottom gives us pretty much what we want, but we don't want it to be completely solid black and white. So you know, we can tweak things a little bit just to get a little bit more detail in there. because our normal map is going to be based off of this height map. So I'd say something like that looks pretty good. Uh, another thing you can do is you have these color samples. So let's move this slider to show more of the original. 
So suppose I want it, uh, one of these reddish colors to be going in more. So let's pick the color sample one and we'll pick color and I'll pick one of these kind of reddish colors in there. And then we can adjust what that reddish color is doing throughout the entire thing. So let's bring our slider back over and we just make our adjustments okay, and you can also isolate the mask so that you're only working on that particular color which might be good if you're working on something like say bricks and a you know, tan grout or white grout but let's go with this just the way it is it looks pretty good so we'll set as height map on the bottom and now we can create our normal map based on that so create and it looks pretty decent already actually uh, let's go with the default is the way it is get smooth crisp I think that's a little too much the mids I'm gonna go back to the default and maybe bring this left one down a little bit and just tweak it a little bit just get a little bit more detail on there without going crazy and then we've got a few other settings here angular intensity angularity amount I'm gonna keep that down uh, a few other settings shape recognition rotation speed bias and what I find really does a lot of the work is this final contrast so you can bring it down all the way and it's just blank or you can bring it way up and you get a lot of contrast in there but we'll just keep it somewhere around there and we're done we can set that as a normal map and then we have a few that I don't really use in my projects that much so I don't really know what the settings would be that would be good uh, we have metallic map smoothness map and an edge map uh, then we come over to the uh, ambient occlusion map and these you'll find they're all pretty much the same kind of thing you can just create and then make some adjustments for whatever works for your project and then I'll so I'll come up here to create for the ambient occlusion and that looks really dark let's adjust the pixel spread pixel depth it's not quite as dark power you can blend the normal ambient occlusion with the depth ambient occlusion yeah and adjust the bias that looks pretty good and we'll just set that as the ambient occlusion map and when you're ready you're satisfied with all of your maps here we can come down here to show full material and right, that's not too perfect it's, you can go back and tweak some of these if you want uh, we can adjust the parallax displacement it's actually not too bad like that can adjust some of the, these sliders based on whatever you have up here the metallic smoothness edge amount ambient occlusion can bring that down it's actually not as bad as I thought uh, we can adjust our texture tiling now this is just basically how it visually looks for you for your testing purposes uh, we can look at it on a cube you can rotate it around or a cylinder and I think this texture actually came out pretty good and again we can adjust our parallax displacement and if you go too far with that it looks a little silly but you know, like this is actually not bad I like this 
cylinder because you can see how it looks on when it's flat and on a curved area on one model. A little bit of tearing in there, but that's okay. Yeah, and you can also look at it on a sphere if you want. And so when you're done, you can come up here to Save Project. Uh, you can choose your file format. I like PNG. And you can Save Project. And then it will save out a project file as well as exporting all of your textures. So let's just call this Stone Wall underscore oh one and so we'll click select and so yeah that's it we're done and and there's a few more things in here you can look at if you want to such as uh, the next cube map will just change the background and so you can see how it'll look in different lighting uh, if your uh, texture you loaded is not tiled, you can make it tiled. You can adjust the alignment. And then clear will just erase everything. So we're done with this and I'll try loading this up. I want to show you how it looks in 3D code. You can actually paint with this texture. I'll be right back. So here we are in 3D coat and I've just got a, a wall here with uh, some polygons and a UV map. Pretty simple object. And so we can come over here to Smart Materials and I'll click New. And you can see we get our preview window there. And now I can just select my color texture. We've got our stone wall diffuse original here. And open that up. It'll appear, and you can pick our depth. So I could go with either the normal map or the height map, which I'll go with that this time. Just open that up, and we get our preview showing how much depth there is. I think that looks kind of a little too much, so we'll bring the depth down a little. Okay, we'll click save. And now let's click a brush with a hard edge. And then I can just start painting with it. And those bricks are pretty big. So let's bring use this hourglass to bring them down, make it a little smaller. And then we can just start painting our bricks on. Or if you don't want the color, of course, you can turn off the normal map. Oops. I meant to say, if you don't want the color, you can turn off the color and just keep the normal map. There you go. I'll turn that back on. And, of course, you can also just use the paint bucket and just paint the entire object with these bricks. Uh, yeah, that's uh, how it looks, how it works, uh, painting with a smart material using the texture you just created. Let's paint that all over real quick and we can come over to the render room and have a quick look. A nice render. And that's it. We've used Materialize to create a texture with normal map and ambient occlusion, which I didn't use here, and the, the texture. So if you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe, and hit that bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video if you want to see more like this. And I'll see you next time.